Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and people of all ages. My name is Josh. Thank you guys so much for watching. Today, we're going to be answering the question, how do you sell vintage jeans, and how can you sell vintage jeans better? So let's get into it. Now for my store's business model, we sell lots of vintage jeans. In fact, it probably makes up about 50% of our inventory at any given time. Uh, I have literally rooms of racks and racks of vintage jeans. Levi's, but also Lee and Wrangler and some other weird like 80s and 90s brands as well. Now the reason we focus on jeans is because jeans is like the infinite trend. Denim has been cool for decades and decades and decades and it probably will remain cool for decades and decades and decades. Now, the different types of jeans and the styles will change, obviously, but denim seems to be everlasting. But the way we buy denim has changed quite a bit recently. In the past 20 years, we're buying more and more of our clothing online. That includes jeans. Uh, even Levi's has seen a significant uptick in the online sale of their jeans. Now, perhaps the most difficult thing about selling things online is the fact that you don't have a dressing room. You can't put the clothes on and decide whether or not you like the fit or not. So as resellers, we have a responsibility to our customers uh, to provide as much information that will be as helpful as possible to the consumer to have confidence that the jeans that they're about to buy and spend money on are going to fit them in a way that they like. So what can we do as resellers to help our customers have confidence in the jeans that they are buying? Now, first thing is you want to make sure that the jeans you have are in good condition, working order, and make sure that they're actually usable as clothing. Uh, I've seen many jeans that are falling apart and destroyed and the moment somebody puts them on, they're going to disintegrate. Buyers don't want that experience. They may want a distressed and destroyed looking jean, but they want it to be structurally sound. Now, the one of the trouble spots is right here inside the crotch. Uh, along the side, along the side, if it's been rubbed a lot, can create holes. And these are not typically aesthetically pleasing holes, uh, as they're often very revealing, and they actually make the structure of the jean really uh, messed up. So you wanna make sure that you see that before you sell it. Uh, I've by accident sold those types of jeans before and I paid the cost for them. So make sure you examine your jeans thoroughly before you sell them. You also want to make sure like the zipper is working. Uh, I've accidentally sold jeans where the zipper was broken. Replacing zippers is not impossible, but most of your customers don't want to do it. Then you want to make sure that your jeans are authentic. Using our videos to date the jeans and figure out the age of the jeans is actually a pretty good way to authenticate them. Um, as many of those different little tips and tricks uh, were not, are not present in counterfeit jeans. Now, number two is taking good pictures. You want to make sure that every surface of your pair of jeans is exposed on the photograph. You want the back side, the front side. You don't want it to be all creased. Um, I see lots of people do the fold um, for their jeans, and that's cool for like the first picture, but you want to make sure that you open it up and show all the surface area because there's all kinds of different imperfections that may actually be uh, appealing to some people, but you don't want to gloss over them and you don't want to miss them. You don't want to mischaracterize what your jeans actually look like in real life. This means you also need to have good light for your photos because a shadow can look like a stain and the buyer may see the shadow but think it's a stain and just walk away from your listing. Now, when you're taking photos, you also want to take photos of any sort of distressing or spot that may look like it is damaged or dirty. Take, for instance, this spot right here on this pair of jeans. Now, you can see right here is a little bit of distressing wear right here on the back side. Now, that's not a terrible thing to have. In fact, most people prefer it because it adds character to the jean. But you need to show it because it might actually help you make the sale. But take those pictures, make sure those things where there's distressing or dirt or grime 
are shown. It's also important that you show the care tags on the inside. Now the care tag is full of great information and buyers often want to see for themselves what the gene actually says. Over the years, I've made mistakes where I've mistitled the listing for the gene and it was the care tag that helped the buyer make the correct decision, not my listing. Now number three is you want the most accurate listing titles as you possibly can get. These titles help connect sellers and buyers. The algorithms for search are putting these things together, finding people, connecting people. If I do not have an accurate description, I'm gonna be lumped in with all the other genes and the specific gene that this person is looking for they may not find. If somebody searches vintage distressed genes, if I don't have vintage distressed genes in my title at all, this pair of distressed genes may not show up. This might be the pair that they want, but since I don't have the word distressed or destroyed in the listing, they're not gonna find it. You also in your titles want to include the cut or the style of the gene. If someone wants a tapered pair of jeans, they may look for a 550. If someone wants a straight look, leg gene, they're gonna look for a 501. But you've gotta have that information in the title. They may not know that they're looking for a 501 versus a 550, but they do know they want a tapered leg rather than a straight leg. Now you also want to include the color wash. If it's a light wash, include light wash. If it's a medium wash, include medium wash. This is very important. Certain seasons, people do not wear certain colors or certain shades. So they may want a darker color jean or a lighter color jean. Make sure that the wash is in your listing description. Now number four is probably the most important tip for online resellers. Since we don't have the fitting room, we have to give measurements. People will take their own measurements and then they'll look at our measurements and see if the jeans that we have may fit them. So that means you need to take measurements. Now, you can't just go by the size on the tag. These are vintage jeans. They should be 20 years or older, so Things have changed since then. A size seven in the early 90s may not be a size seven now. And a size seven on, in two different brands could be completely different. So you have to give physical, actual measurements of that individual pair of jeans. Now, what measurements should you include in your listing? Well, first you should have the waist size. This is one of the most important, if not the most important, measurement you're going to take. You measure from here, to here while the gene is lying flat. Include that in your listing. Now the other one is the hip measurement. You wanna measure from the edge here to the edge here right under the zipper and that will give you your hip measurement. Again, lying flat. Then you wanna have your inseam which is from the end of the crotch down to the opening of the leg. Then you wanna include the rise which is the measurement from the end of the crotch up to the waistband. This will tell somebody how far up their torso the jeans will be worn. Now, if you include those four measurements, you will probably answer 90% of buyer's questions regarding measurements. Now, number five is similar to having a good title description, but a little bit more specific. You can have all the good title description words, but if they're false and not true, you're gonna end up with returns. First, if you're gonna sell vintage jeans, you gotta make sure the jeans are actually vintage. So go watch our videos, determine whether your jeans are vintage or not, and then list them as vintage. Then you wanna determine, are my jeans men's or women's? With Levi's, there's 550 models that are men's 550s and women's 550s. There are 512s that are men's and 512s that are women's. Often when I go on eBay, somewhere around like 30% of the listings I see it have the incorrect gender to the type of gene that it is. And that's problematic for your buyers for a couple reasons. Men's jeans tend to have an exaggerated crotch area. Women may not want that. Women's jeans may have an exaggerated thigh area. Men may not want that. So you have to know, do I have a men's 550 or a women's 550, etc., etc. Now a quick way to determine that on Levi's jeans is right here on this back tag. You'll notice right here there's no width and there's just an M for length. This is because these are women's jeans. 
Levi's doesn't print the actual size of the jeans on the back side as a sort of courtesy because no women wants to broadcast the size of their their waist or their jeans so they did that and you can find the size on the inside on the tag now of course this size can be completely inaccurate to modern day sizing so people like your customers may not understand that now combined with your measurements and the fact that you've determined these are in fact women's jeans your buyer can have a lot more confidence that the jean that they're buying is going to fit their body conversely men's jeans have the measurement here and the measurement here for length and width so if you have a pair of jeans that have the length and width on there you've got a pair of men's jeans now that trick only really works for levi's but even wrangler and lee and these other vintage brands would denote a women's jean with a number like 9 or 12 as the size for a women's jean whereas a men's jean would have the two measurements the waist and the inseam uh, inside on their tag respectively now you might find that women like to buy and wear men's jeans and that's totally cool but you want to make sure that your customer has the correct information to make that determination on their own so hopefully this video helped you in your endeavor to buy and sell vintage jeans and really i just want the vintage jean market to be well run accurate and helpful to buyers who potentially want to buy vintage jeans if they have bad experiences they're just going to go to where they can shop and where they can try things on if the market is well oriented to the consumer we can make sales and the business and the community will continue to thrive so thank you guys so much for watching please remember to like comment and subscribe and hit the notification bell we'll be having more videos like this so if this is something that's interesting to you keep track of it with the notification bell otherwise go out and make some money enjoy vintage jeans and we will see you guys later peace